Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Drop a Stitch podcast. I'm your host, Natalie. And I'm your other host, Danny. And today is the first episode of our market series. Yes, we're starting the Market 101 series. The episode today is going to be how to find good markets, mm -hmm. which is a very important part of yes. markets. But <laughs> before we get into that, <laughs> how was your week? It was good. I'm trying to think, what did I do this week? Um, man, it's time is just going by so fast that mm -hmm. I don't even remember what I did. It rained all week. And then yes. it was nice. Yes, yes, yes. It rained all week. And it was awful, especially when you have toddlers. <laughs> and he's looking outside and we're like, buddy, we can't go to the park. We can go outside. It's raining. And he's like, oh, it's raining. It's wet. Yep, it's wet, buddy. It's, it sucks. But I think not much, though. Just regular stuff. That's it. You? You. Yeah, be... Same as my lately usual. Worked <laughs> on the house. We got all the preparation done for the shed and finished the demolition of the basement. So things are moving well. Yeah. Um, it's exhausting, but it's good. Just hoping we get to finish in time before baby. Of course. <laughs> and uh, you'll be pleased to know that I weaved in. I'm working on my rainbow blanket. Yay! And that, I was going to ask you, what are you working yeah, on? Yeah, I'm working, I mean, same answer that I've been giving forever, I feel. <laughs> no, because before you were working on your dino for baby. I did the dino, right? I did the giraffe, that's true. Um, but yeah, I weaved all the ends. I have three rainbows left to do. And then I'm ready to start turning them into square and assembling them. Nice. So I'm behind my de self-imposed deadline. But, um, yeah, it is what it is. This is our second episode recording, filming yes. the podcast. So we're learning. Last week, we had a little bit of, you know, not issues with the mics, but they were... A teeny tiny bit loud now we still don't want the headphones because they're just too bulky especially for the video but um we're trying to you know fix that so we sound okay and we're not screaming in your ears yeah and also the video was a little bit dark and that's because i tried to adjust the lighting in my in my screen it looked okay, it looked it looked good, but for some reason YouTube probably changed things whenever I uploaded the video and it turned out so dark, but I, you know, I just kept it there because we're learning. We so, gotta start um, somewhere. Yeah, so this time I'm not going to uh, put it darker. It's just gonna be like that, so hopefully YouTube is gonna like it this time. But yeah, today is the first episode of the Market 101 series. I'm so excited. Like we have been saying for the past, I don't know, <laughs> six episodes. Yes. Um, we have so much to share with you guys, so much information to give you. So I feel like it's, it's going to be good. Yeah. And if you're new here, um, Danny did markets full time for a while. I still I still do. No, still time at one point you had some every single weekend yeah but i don't do them in the summer no yeah i, I still i still try to do a lot of markets it's not like my business is you know a bunch of different things and i could definitely not do markets but it's something that i enjoy so much it's a way to sorry it's a way to connect with everyone yeah i really like um, attending to markets and the experience and connecting with people and seeing people wearing my products and and also I really enjoy making the things it's not just um yeah <laughs> well it's different when you get to make the thing over and over and sell it than if you're just creating it to make a pattern yeah um, and on the other hand, I only started doing markets last year. So you've yeah. got like the veteran and Danny and then the newbie and me. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm probably going to be learning al along you guys as we discuss all these topics because I definitely don't know everything. I um, feel like, sorry, I feel like I have 
a lot of information to give you guys and I wait I'm I'm just so distracted with the lines because <laughs> Natalie has when my my lines too are really high I'm sorry we're trying to you know play Adjust. with the the sound because we don't have the headphones so we don't know how loud we're so we sound we're just looking at the waves but anyways um I think I learned so much doing the markets and I made every mistake possible. Like I did everything that you could possibly do wrong. <laughs> I did it. And that's how we, that's how it goes when you start though. Yeah. So I'm hoping that with this we can give you guys tips so you don't make these mistakes. Or you're better prepared because you're going to mm -hmm. make mistakes. But yeah, maybe we avoid you a few. <laughs> yes, hopefully. Okay, so I'm just going to do my border because I'm working on a blanket. And, um, yeah. So let me just... should have asked. What are you working on? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm making a, one of the name blankets. It's an order. So I only put one at a time on my Etsy shop because for some reason it's been super popular. And every time I put one, it sells. That's good. So I put one and it sells. Uh, so I only do one at a time because I it's not a project that I want to get bored. Yeah. You know? And I don't, you don't want to feel overwhelmed yeah. to having too many. Yeah. So um, I put one, I think, last week and I sold a couple of days. So, And then whenever I'm nearly done doing this one or close to be done, yeah. I put it back again and yeah. Um, okay, so. How to find good markets. How to find a good market. Okay, let me just count these really quick. <laughs> Do you want to... Okay, you start. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Danny is going to be the one with the wealth of knowledge here because I started last year. Um, and from my first experience, um, I mean, you have to kind of know your area and know market. It helps a ton if you've shopped at different markets before mm -hmm. um, because you, then you kind of know what the vibe is, what everything is. Um, if you're hoping to make money with this hobby, um, you're most likely not going to want to do community center markets or um, like church basement markets because those are typically people – um, generally older people that yeah. make for the fun of making more so than they want to make money off of their hobby and oftentimes they'll sell stuff for the cost of the yarn or even not even that much if they got the yarn for free um, I went to like it like my mom loves these craft markets so we've gone to multiple and in like church basement like selling things like what is it fingering weight like lace weight like tiny yeah. tiny yarn socks wool socks wool yarn for 10 bucks I and know. it's like this must have taken you hours upon hours yeah and it's like but like i just make them and i have no one to give them to so this pays for the yarn so this is great and so these are not the markets that you want to attend you want to attend markets where um handmade is valued in a way where you can make money where yeah. it's all makers that are trying to make money it's all small businesses more so than individuals that are just kind of selling their own crafts um so it's very very important that you find the proper markets um that will bring you the clientele that you need or else you'll be very very disappointed yeah um so there's different ways that you can go about finding your market yeah, so I wanted to I want to add to that. Um, like Natalie said, if you're trying to do this full time, then definitely avoid those. I did all of those church basements and community centers and schools. And sometimes you sell nothing. Sometimes you sell a couple of things. And yeah, so if you are trying to do this full time, if you really want to be um, like committed and you want this well, to just be and charge your worth yeah that too and not, not even like so much how much you want to make but just charging your worth yeah and and don't if this is your hobby then then you're good you know do whatever you want but if this is something you want to do full time then definitely pay attention to that to that the first thing the first advice that I'm going to give you guys is whenever you are looking for a market you found a market you contact the person 
or you email the person, if they don't ask you what you sell or if you don't have to apply, that's the that's a red, a flag. red flag right there. That's the first thing you need to know yeah. because that means they're not even looking into who is attending the market, who are the vendors, how many it's meters not, is there, yeah. how many people are selling candles, how many people are selling jewelry. There's probably... 15 vendors that want to sell hats and you're going to be one of those. So then that's just not okay um, if the, if you want to do this full time, of course. So if... Another we, giveaway too, I find, is mm -hmm. if they allow um, like pyramid businesses, like if the, if there's a Tupperware and an Avon lady. Yeah. And it, like that's also typically a giveaway where it's not necessarily the kind of market that you want. They're not focusing yeah. on handmade. They're not curating their market. And so it's just kind of, if you apply, you get in and, or you don't even have to apply. If you just say you want to go, you go. And yeah. yeah, it ends up like there could be 15 knitters out of 20 vendors and everybody else is selling their product for the cost of yarn, whereas you're trying to make money. So people are looking at your $50 hats and then looking at the $5 hats next door and no one is buying from you and you're just wasting a day. Yeah. So that is the first one. And then also, if you, um, if they, these people, if, if you see that there's no application, so then, you know, that's, that's a huge no-no. And also, the price, if it's free, it's also not going to be good. If Though, it's... I have, last year, I did a market that I didn't have to apply for. But it was new. And it was free. So the yeah. caveat to that is, if it's a brand new market, if they're trying yeah. to put together this market for the first, first time, then it's kind of normal, or not necessarily normal, but it's something that often the, um, not the owner, but the... the whoever organizes yeah, the, the organizer. market um, will give it for free to kind of entice people to come to have more vendors yeah. and to have more people. They'll kind of try to find different solutions to kind of bring people there. But so that's like the exception of the rule. It's though. the exception to the rule. Yes. Yeah. And typically you'll do much better at a market that's well established that has a good yeah. customer base than you would do at a brand new market. That's just trying to. And, like also, and also you have to understand that People are charging you for this market, not just for them to make money, that of course the people that are organizing these markets, if this is their full-time job, um, they need to make money. And But also they put a lot of effort on doing publicity, um, you know, printing, what flyers, are they called? flyers, getting the word out, mm -hmm. going to radios. Uh, we know uh, this girl that I attend markets that she does. She puts so much effort into it. Um, she's Emily from Cheerfully Made. She even goes to TV. She does a lot, a lot, a lot to put the word out. And so everybody knows about these markets. So this is the other thing is that if you're looking into markets and you have never heard of these markets it's because it's not very popular. And if it's not very popular, and if it's only, like Natalie said at the beginning, a community center or just, you know, that area, then it's not probably not going to be the market for you. Yes. So now... Now that you kind of have the basics and yeah. kind of how to recognize whether a market might be good or not. And a good thing, like if you're trying to find markets to talk to the people around you, yeah. um, most likely people have gone to markets and can kind of be like, oh, yeah, everything's so cheap there. Maybe that's not where you want to go. Yeah. Or like, yeah, like this one was like, everything was expensive, but like the things were so nice or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So you can kind of get good ideas of market. Then, then you can also like kind of search that market and yeah. see and even contact vendors that were there and see how their experience was okay so one thing that i want to mention before we get into how to find the markets is that at the beginning this is my first years of doing markets i went to every single market like i said community center charge um schools everything and I really not 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 very quickly, probably like one or two years, I realized that those weren't the people in the market that I wanted to attend to because I wanted to pursue this full time and I knew that that wasn't my my thing. So what I did is 
one friend back then told me that the Etsy market was happening. So if I wanted to go with her to shop around. So that's what I did. I went to the market with her. And first of all, I was blown away by the amount of people that this is pre-pandemic. The amount of people that there was there, the line was around the building. And this is a soccer field. Like it was all around it. Yeah. And we got in, it was, we had to pay to get into. So that's another indicator. Mm -hmm. So we got in there. And as soon as I went in there, I was like, holy shit. Like, I want to be here. Yeah. Like, this is the place that I want to sell. Like, here is, this is my vibe. This is my, my kind of public, these customers, like all the vendors were, amazing everything was their booth like that's that's other thing that when whenever i went there their booth was just so well put together put together and, made yeah. you can tell that every single one of these vendors this is their full-time job it wasn't just um like tables not necessarily full-time jobs though like oh, i mean not necessarily but you can tell that this is this was a their small little business. small business yes. yeah yeah it's something that and they no, do seriously yeah. and not just the kind of hobby thing yeah that's what i was gonna say you can you can really tell that this wasn't somebody's hobby yeah that this was like a dead giveaway business. is when people have like vertical walls and like yeah you know height storage if you go to a market and it's tables and stuff is just laid flat on all the tables yeah and there's no signage there's nothing but behind the people there's no you know like tiered stuff on top of the the tables to like bring you know whatever they're selling at different heights yeah then you kind of have a good idea that this is maybe not the market for you yeah so everything was beautiful at this market everything was a dream and I was like convinced that I'm gonna be in here next year like I want to be here so what I did after shopping around and walking around I found the girl and I don't know if I found Emily or if I seen on one of the signs and I just went to Instagram and tried to Google her and then I asked her over on Instagram I cannot I can remember how I did it but I found her and immediately asked what you know what are the steps to um, participate in this market like it's beautiful mm -hmm. I loved it the vibe is amazing the amount of customers is was ridiculous and she's like, just subscribe to my newsletter. And I email, you know, whenever applications are open. And that's how I did it. And the following year, I got the email, I applied, I got in, and the rest is history. <laughs> that was um, whenever I knew, okay, this is the kind of markets that I want to go. Yeah. And I never, ever did any community center again or charge schools yeah they're not they're not as great as they are for certain things they're not the market that you go to if you really want to make that turn this into a small bit not necessarily full-time just small business yes like I, I just keep confused i know small business yeah because i'm not full-time and i still don't want to go to yeah. a market where everything is five yeah. bucks you know yeah um but just say if you're taking your small business seriously and you want it to become something, then you kind of want to go somewhere where it's a little bit more professional, a little bit more curated, a little bit more yeah. focused, I guess. Yeah. And uh, OK, so now that we um, know, now we need to know how to find markets. Yes. So the typical places, Google. Facebook, Instagram, and even radio ads. Yeah. So the first time that I looked for markets, I went on Facebook. So you will find um, all the groups. And what I did was just to type um, craft market or Christmas market or craft show. And then you put the area. So, for example, I'm in Ottawa, so I will put craft show in Ottawa, craft market in Ottawa, and try to use all the different words to find it. Um, same for Google, same for Instagram. In Instagram, you can go to places. You can look for hashtags. You yes. can... 
what else? Because typically people that are, um, what's it called? Advertising the, the markets will add the hashtags and will add the place and everything. So then people Because they want people know to and, be able to find yeah. it. So therefore you should be able to find it as well. Yeah. And radios as well. I knew for a couple a couple of markets that I heard on the radio actually and and that also tells you how good the market is because they put the effort to actually go well, yeah on the they radio. have the budget to be on the radio they, uh-huh. you know that it's, it's a good market um, another one that I found um, last year so I started doing markets for the first time last year and I was a little bit late because this is one thing we should mention as well application if you're looking for like knitting and crochet markets you typically want to do fall and winter markets because that's when people buy hats and mittens and scarves and toques and everything else that we make um not so many people are interested in knitting in the dead of summer when it's 40 degrees outside um and so you think you have to look way earlier than you think i think i applied in like august thinking i was early enough and I had missed most I think of the it deadlines. Wasn't a little bit later than August? No, it was late August. Oh. But most of the most of the markets were like closing in June or July for the yeah. applications and I was like, oh, I didn't realize like I thought I was way ahead. I was like looking at Christmas markets in August. I'm ahead. No. It's gotta be much earlier than that. So keep that in mind too. If yeah. you like if you don't already know which markets you are wanting to apply to you can actually start looking now yeah. and like get in contact with the people and kind of find out when in the application process is so you have a good idea and you don't miss the applications. Yeah. Um, and then because I was late, um, my pick of markets was a little slim. And so I applied to the ones that I felt were okay. And then once I was there, um, just talking with other makers is also a great way to find other markets because they would tell me like, oh, I'm also doing this one in a couple of weeks and I'm doing this one. And so I took notes of the markets that they've mentioned that they've done before or um, they were going to do. And so like I kind of have more of an idea this year of similar markets to the one I've done yeah. that these people have also done and enjoyed. So that's another way to like find micro once you get in one that is kind of what you're looking for, you can talk to people and kind of find out more, especially if like I was, that it happened that I was sitting beside someone that was doing pottery. And so I was just chatting with her and we're not in competition. We sell two completely different things. So she was more than happy to tell me, you know, what market she was doing. And yeah. Yeah. And also whenever you went with me to one market and this lady came, lady yes. came that's how you got into the market that was for free. But yes. it was the first time that this person was um, organizing a market. So Natalie came to help me because in numerous time, times I asked for her her help because you know I have little kids so I was like I need your help (laughs) I got to cuddle a baby the whole day it was great she feels like I helped her I just got baby snuggles all day but I mean (laughs) yes (laughs) so she came and helped me and this girl came to my booth and she was like oh are you free this day um I'm gonna host a market and I'm looking for vendors and whatnot and I was like I am booked because I I had you know um, the weekends booked but my friend she does the same thing as me and she's free so then she got your contact info yes and that's how you got into that market so that one yeah doing going to markets letting people come to you and getting around people that sell at markets asking for you know their information don't be afraid to ask people like what is the contact information for the organizer of so and so show um don't be afraid of doing that just go out there and ask and i feel like you will find in the places we named every market Yeah. I think And it's okay, too, if you don't find them all the first year. Yeah. Like, find a couple, or depending on what you're trying to do, if you're only trying to do, you know, two or three, then find a couple, do them, feel it out, see how it is, and you can always improve next year. Like, 
this doing markets and having your booth set up and everything is not a like one time end all be all like you yeah. can improve over time you can change things up you can modify so like don't put your, the pressure on yourself either to find like the perfect market and have the perfect experience the first time yeah because you're gonna learn things you're gonna you know and it might be time. it might be a super good market but you might not like i don't know the environment you might not like other vendors you might not like the organizer you know so like you're gonna find the markets that you really like and it's gonna take you a couple of years of trial and error to find like natalie said the one you really like and the one you feel comfortable with and like and build a relationship too like yeah. you have a really strong relationship with some of the organizers yeah. where you've been so many times it's been so many years and they just know you mm -hmm. and if you apply they know who you are they know what you bring they yeah. know like that you're easy to work with that you don't cause trouble like all that stuff and so as soon as they see your name they're like oh yeah that's Danny I'm gonna like yeah approve accept her, her accept yeah. her into the market and so building that relationship also takes time like you're not like that one market I'm talking about um I applied for it and I didn't get in because yeah. I don't know this person right yeah so and there's other knitters that are already there like Danny that have you know already built their relationship so obviously they're going to go ahead of me so it can take some time and don't get discouraged if you know you don't get into the market that you want to the first time just keep applying and that will eventually eventually happen happen yeah and um man and, and now i got my a brain fart oh, again of course what it always episode. happens i know what an episode <laughs> what was i gonna say uh oh, oh yes i i remember um whenever you are going to apply to a market and know that if you are going to look for a good market you should apply one of the things they're going to ask you is a description of your product pictures of your product that's next week's episode by the way is it yes really <laughs> yes okay let me let, let, let's just see i i believe you um the application process oops okay <laughs> Never mind. She, she made this list, guys. But she, <laughs> we're we're gonna explain. Yeah. So yeah. I think no. I think we can't overwhelm the people here. I think step one is knowing how to find good markets. Yeah. We kind of gave you what to look for, what to kind of stay away from. Yeah. H hints of where you can go. Facebook groups, just Googling, listening to the radio, Instagram, talking to other makers. Um, so I think for this week, your homework, if you're looking to do markets in the fall, yeah. should be to do that. Try to search for market. Make a list of markets that you'd be interested in either applying in or going to attending if you just want to kind of see what they're like before you apply to mm -hmm. be there. Um and then if you want to take it even a step further, email them and find out how to apply yeah. to the market. So whether that's joining their newsletter or whether that's just contacting the organizer and... Okay, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> ...being put on their mailing list. Um, so yeah, I think that would should be the homework for this week. Mm -hmm. And then next week, because you're not going to apply to a market just yet. We're still early yeah. May. Um, next week, we'll go through the application process. What they ask, how do you respond to the questions, what you need to have prepared in order to apply, things that you can do to improve your applications, all of that. That will be next week's yeah. episode. And um, if you follow people that attend to markets already, and if you can tell in their Instagrams, where they live, where 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 they are located. Um, and if you see that they have attended to markets, just go ahead and ask them. Ask the contact information whenever you go on their Instagram. So try to do that with the people that you follow or um, just searching for places. It doesn't matter. You can scroll through their Instagrams and see if they have, you know, pictures of their booth or if you are like a a tr not true follower but like somebody that watched the their stories and stuff yeah. like that you will know who does markets so go ahead and ask them um especially if you know where they live or the city at least yeah if they, they live near you especially yeah. and um even if you know if they do market uh, fall markets or winter markets like we do 
um, you can still find in there their pictures and stuff like that. So just yes. ask. Ask. Go through their highlights sometimes. They'll have yeah. like a market highlight or just scroll down to last fall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it doesn't matter if you don't find anything that's recent. If you see... Uh, like an Etsy market or another big market in your area that that already passed, still look for look for the information and contact the organizer. Like that's the first thing. And the places that I find the easiest to find markets are Facebook and Instagram. Because you're yes. obviously not going to be listening to the radio all day, every day. But if you're driving, you know, put your local radio and pay especially attention. Uh-huh, pay attention to that. Google is also, it can be a little bit overwhelming too because it's such a big platform. Um, but pay attention on Facebook and Instagram. And um, on Facebook, look on your local. You can also ask on groups if you are in like a community group. Yes. Whatever you don't, um, not like the buy nothing stuff. No, but like but neighborhood groups. Yeah. You can also ask in there, like, does anybody know about a good market or just a market? And then you can research and, and see if it's a good market or not. Um, but that's another great way to find markets. That's true. Especially if you don't know that much in your area. Um, so, yeah, I feel like that's, that's. Step one. Step one. <laughs> find the markets. Find them in the market. And, and like Natalie said, now you know what to avoid and, yes. and whatnot. Yeah. And I mean, you could, I mean, I did markets last year for, with someone who's technically very well set up in the area here um, yeah. to do markets. But you kind of come to find out once you do markets with this person that she's not as organized as maybe you would expect an organizer to be. Um, yep. And it can be frustrating. So even though the publicity is there and the markets are great and is the, the customer base there, is though? great. <laughs> I mean, she does. <laughs> okay. She does. It depends which one. Too. I did one market with this person and I was like, nope, never going back again. And it well, was a very expensive market. Mine wasn't very expensive. So my hopes weren't too that high. high. Yeah. Um, mine it, it was kind of decent for what it was. But the experience in general was very confusing. There was no, you know, information. information. One of the markets was canceled. I am still haven't gotten my refund on my fees. Really? Yep. Even though that I've sucks. emailed multiple times. Oh, my God. Um, so, yeah. So, like, you can still, fi- you know, find markets with that are well-established with, you know, organizers and businesses that are well-established that are doing markets and still maybe decide that this is not the market for you or this is not an organizer that you vibe with well and that want to do. So you're not going to find out until you try. (laughs) So try it. And that's what I said. It's going to take you probably a couple of years until you get, you know, the flow of like, okay, this is the people that I like. This is the markets that I like. So don't think that you need, like Natalie said before, that you need to find everything right away. Take your time and trust the process (laughs) And also don't get discouraged right away. No. Um, it's, and if you don't find anything at first, also don't get discouraged. Like keep looking, keep asking, and keep on the searching for the markets. Yes. Because sometimes, like Natalie said too, um, it we're in early May. It's probably still early for some markets. So if you don't find anything yet... Um, you should be able to find the ones that have passed. That have events, passed, yeah, yeah. Right? You might They might not have the dates for this year ye- yet. They might not have all the info out for this year, like where it's going to be because some of them kind of change places and yeah. stuff. But you should be able to find info about the market itself. So you can just make yourself a list. You might have some application dates for some. Some might have already their dates out. Some might not. Yeah. But just basically make yourself a list of the ones you're interested in and kind of gather as many inf- as much information as you can um, for how the application process works for that market. And then you should be ready Good for next go. week's episode yeah. on how to apply in the application process. Yeah. So I hope you guys found this episode interesting and... That you're going to love this market series. <laughs> yes, that you're going to love this market series because we have the episodes that are going to get more interesting as... 
Uh, we drove more in depth into yeah. markets. And then what to make, what to bring, and all of that fun yeah. stuff. So um, stay tuned for next week's episode. Yes. I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great week. And if um, you want to email us, you can email us at dropastitchpodcast at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. All your questions and and oh, and on YouTube, you can also leave a comment. If you have more questions, we are happy to answer all of that. And if you're listening on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or anywhere where you listen to podcasts, please leave us five-star reviews because that helps us a lot. And if you are also listening there, it also helps if you can just go to Google and subscribe to our channel, give us a like or something like that, um, so, something like that, <laughs> <laughs> or leave a comment, a like, or you, you guys know. So yeah, talk yeah. to you next, next week. week. Have a great week, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>